Now is Mr. Nick Bockwinkel. He is a professional wrestler. Wrestling is theater. It's a fake. Not really. Are, you're wrong. You're an heir. Why do you think that there are so many who say it is a fake? It is basically simple. We live in a world which is uh, predominantly directed to live within parameters. You cannot really let loose on your radio or your TV show and say what you'd like to about the community, the people, the, the city. Right. Uh, the newspapers are restricted. Johnny Carson's restricted. Walter Cronkite. There are very few people who you might say really have freedom of, the, of expression uh, and are not going to get scolded. If you work for IBM or Control Data and you come to work in a terribly loud plaid jacket, they call you upstairs. It's the gray slacks, the dark blue sport coat, a striped tie, and let's keep it that way. How do you relate that to the question about The question about wrestling then comes down to the fact that you'll turn TV on and what you're going to see is some guy blowing his horn, patting himself on the back or beating on his chest, yeah. doing it in a flamboyant, even outrageous style. Right. He may be attired flamboyantly and outrageous, and he's got 250 to 300 pounds of muscle, mm. well-versed in the martial arts to back up his mouth. Okay, but that's the, so the, what so the theater is outside the ring. Well, well but, but, but wait, yeah, you, you're saying theater, but what's theater about that? Well, the, the, anybody who dresses in a garish way. I'm not saying that, I don't believe that that's wrong, by the Go way. Go out on the street. I, I totally agree. So okay. the, all of life is a you, stage. You and I are mundane and blah. You've got a dark blue suit on, I've got a dark blue uh, sport coat on. Yeah. We're really drab. We shouldn't even be here. No, We're not in our with me for all. all of life is a stage, so therefore all of life is theater. I guess what I'm asking is within the ring. Now, I'll give you an example. Did you see the hockey game last night? No. Okay. In the hockey game, Jack Carlson and Dave Hutchison from the Blackhawks, Carlson from the, the Twins, or the Twins, thank you, yeah. from the North Stars, went at it. They fought for, you know, fisticuffs for about three minutes total. And uh, Carlson comes out with, uh, I believe he may even have a cracked knuckle. He ended up with six stitches on, from, from uh, slicing Hutchison's head open. Mm -hmm. And Hutchison took a bunch of stitches in the eye, mm -hmm. or around the eye. I see the wrestlers going at it. My dad used to be a wrestler. That's why I find it interesting. Good. I don't see anybody bleeding. Well, when you're a professional, when you know what you do, you're supposed to play hockey. You're not supposed to be fighting. If uh, they spend all their time fighting, they know how to hit people and not bust themselves up, and they know to do the best thing they could possible to get hit without getting busted up. But the point is, is that if I know uh, that you are going to hit me in the head, or when mm -hmm. you see them going at it occasionally, yeah. even though they're, they're not supposed to be boxing when they're wrestling, Theoretically, there should be some cuts, and there oh. but you don't see them. Uh, take a closer look at my forehead. Yeah. What does it look like? It looked like you had a couple of accidents. There you go. Uh, but those are accidents. Oh, they're accidents? What do you mean by accidents? In other words, accidents happen even though if you and I were, were rehearsing our wrestling match. You're, you're, I, I, Do you see I, what I'm saying? I see the point you're trying to make. And, and I'm not sure I'm trying to make a point. I, I'm wondering why all these other people, you've got sports announcers oh. in the Twin Cities who will not have you on their programs or talk to you because they say you're not an athlete. Now, I think you're an athlete, but I don't know whether you're a sportsman. Paul Harvey proclaims this as the greatest athletes in the world. Paul Harvey says Reaganomics works. I'm not certain I like the analogy. Oh, that might be true, too, then. But still, and there are sportscasters who do. Yeah. The least amount number of critics we have, and usually, you know, I always get a kick out of, quote, sportscasters, and when, quote, none of them have ever been those who played the game. True. Most critics have never been on stage, whether it's about uh, the movies, or uh, theater, right. or musicals, uh, so that most critics are what you call fringe people. They live on the fringe of an element of something that is important. Okay. So that when sportscasters say, well, uh, you know, this isn't this, and whether it's football, wrestling, basketball, whatever. Agree. So few of them have ever participated, but they become the authority. And we, we fools, maybe us, maybe you, and the humanoids out there, take them to be the credibility ones. Are you suggesting there is a true sense of competition? Oh, no, absolutely. Like? It comes down to this. Nothing you'd like better or your station would like better than numbers for you. Oh, agreed. You're a winner. Ooh, do you see the smile come to his absolutely. face? Absolutely. He, he yeah. glowed a little. Yeah. And it's simple. Because you want to be a winner, your station wants a winner. Right. And if you become a winner, you make more money. They make more money. Right. It goes right down the line. Right. Promoters and people are the same way. They only want the winners. So I have no reason whatsoever when they'll say, well, he takes a turn and he wins the night and the other guy takes a turn and wins the other night. I've heard that tired old beaten cliche. Mm -hmm. Why? I'm the world's heavyweight champion, mm -hmm. recognized throughout, okay? 
so that what advantage do I have to make myself a loser? Now, mind you, if you want to drop uh, about 10 or $20 million on me, I'm not going to say that, you know, it's the old story about uh, the guy offering the woman a million bucks, and he says, she says, fine, then and they start quibbling about price, nickel, you know, right. right. Yeah. So that I'm saying that it's very feasible anybody in this world can be reached. In but wrestling? The, in anything. Does in it happen in wrestling? No, basically not, because there's nobody that wants to come up with that much money, I would presume. Do you remember and besides the, that, you know, the people only want to see the winners. Do you I remember the, the wrestler Yvonne Robert? Remember Yvonne the name? Robert. Yes, I do. Okay. Yvonne Robert used to rehearse his wrestling with my father. That's how... No, no. Uh, is that I'm what, telling well, Okay, let me ask you a question. Okay. Is that what the Vikings do four days of the week before they go to... No, we're not talking about practicing, Nick. We're talking oh, about well, rehearsing. Well, uh, they were, Robert rehearsed his falls hmm. with my dad. Oh, I go out. I'll get into a ring. Yeah. I'll, I'll go over falls that I have taken. Well, that times. you have taken or that you will take. There's a difference. It, the ones that I will wind up having to take again? Put it this way. If you, pick, well me up, taken, if you yeah. pick me up over your head and yeah. slam me down in a body... Is it a body slam? Sure. Okay. Is. You'd end up breaking my back. And uh -huh. however, I see you do it with these other wrestlers, and I'm in poor shape for a while, and then they get up, and it's as if uh, two seconds later, they've got their act together. Now, in well, boxing, you see the guy getting pounded out. He doesn't make a great comeback. Sometimes he's TKO'd. Or he's KO'd and he's just lying flat. In mm -hmm. wrestling, nobody lies flat. You know, 30 seconds uh, later, they're ready to go. Well, yeah, but no, you're, you're, miss, you're, you're missing yourself in the point there where you said uh, somebody gets slammed and they get right up. Yeah. You get slammed, you're not going to get right up. I know that. Okay. Yeah. But I remember when I first started working out, yeah. I came out of spring football in college at a big university. Which college? University of Oklahoma. Yeah. I was in condition. I was like 19 years old. I weighed about 210, and I could, every fiber in my body had to be as tight as could be. Hmm. Okay? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. My father picked me up, and he slammed me. He was a wrestler? Yes. I didn't he know. had worked out. We were working out, and it was kind of at the end of the workout. Right. He slammed me, and I laid there for 15 minutes. With the conditioning that I had, I couldn't get up. Right. I felt like a pancake patter uh, ladder that had just been dropped on the pan, and I must have gotten about that thick. And I, well, he was taking a shower while I was slowly sucking the air back into my body. Right. It took about a year, and then I was able to maybe, say, take three slams of that same nature before it started to have that devastating effect. How do you... That's why you can't, yeah. I can, and you can see a wrestler take these tremendous falls. See, everybody has a tendency to not want to believe that we're really in the condition that we are. Oh, I believe you're in the condition. Oh, but I mean, but then when you add that to the, uh, to the guy who comes out with the wild hat yeah. or the wild, colorful jacket, right. they want to say that, oh, he's not for real. He can't be for real. I'm talking about what appears to be, to some people, chore choreography in the ring. Forget what happens outside the ring. Super. That, that's, that's their opinion, and, and, and they're totally wrong. They could go in and try it themselves. It may seem that way. You spend enough time doing anything. How about the pass play on a weekend, uh, the, the big bomb? It's beautiful, and, uh, you know, the Vikings win the game in the last 10 seconds. And during the course of the year, how many times will they run that play successfully? Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. So, so they're repeating, quote, the choreography, mm -hmm. but they do it enough. They spend hours upon hours practicing, running that pass play, that same identical pattern, putting a little twist into it here that maybe nobody else can see but the other defensive back coaches. As we taped uh, th this morning's program, um, and I'll say it's on mm -hmm. tape, this morning on the Today Show, there was a fascinating piece. I don't know if you had the opportunity to see it, and if you didn't, get a, no. get a copy of it. They did this piece on the, on the incredible fascination the public in Memphis, Tennessee has, specifically, mm -hmm. with wrestling. They were drawing 12, place, 13, 14,000. Every 000. place in the United States. <clears throat> now, what was interesting was that behind the scenes, the reporter went into the dressing room, mm -hmm. and he didn't approach it as a cynic. He was doing more like the sociological su study. Fine. You know, why do people operate, you know, why do they get off in wrestling? Mm -hmm. All the quote-unquote the bad guys were in one dressing room, and all the quote-unquote quote, the good guys were in another dressing room. Now, why, Bas do, why does that happen? You're, 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 you're conglomerating all the bad and the good. And the, no, 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 no. The, 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 the reporter room. did that. I didn't do that. Okay, okay. okay this is but what he doesn't realize is basically... Promoters don't want two wrestlers who are wrestling each other to be in the same dressing room. Mood, tempo, whatever. Why do the, why do the football teams and the basketball teams and everybody else have separate dressing rooms? Uh, I see the difference, but, uh, but I'm, I'm not certain I can relate. He t t uh, typecast because the oh, well, promoter was he, on, but well, wait, because the promoter it, yeah. was quoted on the Today Show saying what we try to do is all the people are considered to be 
the, not the devils, not the evils, there's a word for the bad guys and there's a word for the good guys. You are one of the good guys, I suppose. And then there's yes, the, I am. Generally, the guy wearing the mask is a bad guy and the guy not no, wearing the, the mask. The black hat and the white hat. Okay, whatever. Yeah, the okay. Okay. Is why do they have that type of distinction? And then why do they put the two of them in, in individual dress? Like Simply, uh, it's an osmosis process that over a period of years, when I first came into uh, my sport, yeah. I was, quote, I would have to say, known as a good guy. I came out of college with the typical all-American syndrome that gets pounded into our head. And then I got into my late 20s, and all of a sudden I started to realize, because I was always very sarcastic and arrogant, and uh, a lot of my friends were saying, you're really a phony bock, Michael. And I said, what do you mean? Yeah. And he says, you get up there and you give it the humble pie shot and the whole routine. And I realized that I had been doing what I had been told to do what we're told to do in school, that restricted channel society we live in. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I got on TV, uh, because the opportunity I'm on probably more times during the week than you are. Uh, and I got In on, my case, that would be very easy for you. Yeah, okay, yes. then, that's a bad comparison again. <laughs> uh, and, and all of a sudden, I realized, that's true. So I started getting on, and I just started saying my thing in my own style and fashion, being true unto myself. Which is what? What is the real Nick Bockwinkel? Uh, this he, is the real he, Nick Bockwinkel. He is arrogant. He is <clears throat> condescending. Why? He is standoffish. Uh, part inheritance, uh, part basic structure, part attitude. I'm not quite sure why. I'm really at a point where I don't care. I feel comfortable with it. Yeah. And, uh, and I automatically was not liked by the people. People don't like to be told sometimes the facts. People, and especially if somebody sounds like they're right, or if they are right. Yeah, then it's worse. And, and then, then you have to really be humble and really make it palatable. If we met mm -hmm. off, off television, which we've never had the opportunity yeah, to do, right. are you different? Quiet? Uh, cerebral? Yes, uh, uh, yes, no, and indifferent. I'm, I'm uh, low-key. I'm standoffish. Uh, if you treated me as a woman one time at an airport asked for my autograph, and I said, surely. I gave it to her. And she uh, said to her brother, whoever was with her, says, see, he's really not a nice guy, not like he is on TV. Yeah. And he says, and he will continue to be a nice guy as long as you continue to address him as Mr. Bockwinkle. Interesting. We'll be back after these words. My guest again is Nick Bockwinkle. There are a number of wrestling organizations or mm -hmm. infrastructures. You belong to which? What is known as the American Wrestling Association. Um, I do a lot of my business uh, right through the Minneapolis Boxing and Wrestling, which is a large booking promotion office uh, for the entire world, as well as the United States, as well as for this regional part of the country. So that if I was a promoter, let's say, in Tokyo, and I wanted you, I would call them? Yeah, I do a lot of my business through them. Okay, let me ask you a question. Let's assume that I was working up the ladder of the wrestling industry. Gotcha. And... I want to make it to the big time. I want to make it to the Bockwinkle stage. How do I get there? Because for some wrestlers, they've complained to me privately off the air. Mm -hmm. And they might be calling us on the radio show when we do it. And I don't know. I don't know enough about the structure. Super. How hope, do you work hope, up the hope, ladder? I hope they will. How do you work up that ladder? Hard work. It's like any other, it's like any other business. They uh, claim it's closed. Uh, no. They're, they're, <clears throat> the ones who claim it's closed, the ones who claim that it is restricted and it's protected and this and that, they're all totally erroneous. Predominantly, they haven't got it. Mm -hmm. uh, predominantly, it's sour grapes. They got what? Explain what you mean. They, when I say they haven't got it, they haven't got the talent, they haven't got the ability, they haven't got the whole thing. They the haven't showmanship. got the dedication, the whole... showmanship, if you want to call it that, charisma, chutzpah, or whatever you, what the expression is. Yeah. It makes no difference. It is a total thing. Basically, you must have the wrestling ability, you must have the dedication to the sport, you must take and be in condition, you must be willing to sacrifice, spend the hours in the gym, working out, staying in shape. Let's assume, I'm, down, doing, Nick, let's assume I'm doing all of that. And if now, you're, if you're doing it all. Yeah. And I'm, I'm doing the small towns and playing right, small, just right. like small market radio or television. How do I then move up the ladder? I mean, there isn't... It, there it's, aren't, just, there, it's just there, a natural osmosis process. Are there bird dogs out there who are scouting? No, no, because what has happened <clears throat> is you'll have, say, when I sit at Minneapolis Boxing Wrestling, is a large regional and worldwide promotion booking office. Yeah. Okay, even the small fry will go through him. 
Okay, or say uh, he's a good friend of the promoter in Omaha, yeah. and uh, he's got the ability, and so he gets a match for you because he's the promoter. Okay, there will be other wrestlers there who will see, th see that. There will be other booking agents that will see him. There will be the referees. There will be other uh, wrestling association officials. Right. And if he's got it, like anything, whether it's in radio or on stage, no matter who the people are, if they've got what it takes, somebody mentions it to somebody, and the next thing you know, they say, well, hey, give that kid a break. Do you essentially have the same people wrestling the same people on a cyclical basis? Not on a cyclical basis. You will have a lot of the same pe people wrestling the same people. I mean, there's more, we have more in wrestling than you have in, say, the tennis tournament. I mean, there you've got about 20 guys who play each other same All the time. every weekend. You Agreed. Know? Yeah. Uh, I will wrestle maybe the same person four or five times during the year. Uh, but it may be in totally disparate parts of the world, maybe in Tokyo, maybe in Los Angeles. Do you carry Chicago. grudges from one match to another? Uh, I don't. I, as, as being as good as I am, I'm able to raise above that, and I think it's one of the characteristics that has possibly made me as good as I am. What does it mean to be as good as you are? To me, to be as good as you are means to be the world's heavyweight champion, to, be, uh, to have that ability, uh, to be able to defeat most of your opponents, uh, if not all of them, and uh, to be able to get the job done constantly. Some of the, some of the people who are, quote-unquote, the enforcers in hockey, or let's say boxers, mm -hmm. have complained that when they go into a bar, others try to pick a fight with them, saying, hey, you're not so big as it. We get that. Do you get that? Sure. I don't. You don't? Uh, predominantly for one reason, I think they know that... Uh, my caustic tongue will cut them and slash them to pieces before the first blow is ever thrown. And uh, the guy who's trying to make a name for himself and pushes a little bit of male macho by doing a number on me, yeah. he doesn't want to be verbally insulted. He can't punch that. See? Your point. So what he'll try to do is he'll pick on my, my cohorts who, uh, who are, say, what he considers more of the physical type only. Up to what age can a wrestler wrestle? Ganya retired last year at 55, just about uh, this time of the year. And uh, uh, he's been an old adversary and uh, in uh, complete acclamation to my own sport. Uh, I have to give my old adversary a lot of credit. At 55 years old, uh, I think he had the potential maybe to go on for another year or two. Uh, maybe more, I don't know. Uh, I understand his family were the people who were pushing for him, uh, the one him out. But uh, he's a prime example. In Europe, where you have a lot of wrestling clubs, uh, amateur wrestling clubs, yeah. you'll have, and in fact, in the Olympics, if you check the uh, countries in Europe, you will see that many wrestlers, uh, amateur wrestlers, 35, 45, 50 years old. My father was on the Canadian Olympic wrestling team, Roman Greco. Uh -huh. What would you say the major distinction is, other than just the, the format of wrestling, between the wrestler who's in Roman Greco versus the wrestler such as you? Well, I mean, R R Roman <coughs> Greco is amateur for one and uh more strategic more calculated oh, yeah i mean it's more limited uh, theoretically in the amateur wrestling there are holes and of course a lot of the amateurs are, they always chuckle at this uh there there are most of the holes are designated so that they're trying to protect the wrestler to keep him from getting hurt right yet guys get busted up in amateur wrestling just as much yeah. uh as far as locking a hole you might say uh they, uh, you, you don't want to give the man any tremendous advantage of uh, flipping him in the air or something. They, you have to have a knee on the mat before you can slam the man. You can't slam him from the upright position. Right. You, you know, things like that. If you were to pick me up and yeah. slam me down, mm -hmm. and you were at the same time going to be my mentor, and mm -hmm. you would say, okay, Dick, I want you to protect yourself, how do I protect myself from the body slam? The basic thing I would show you would be that once you get up and you're up in the air and you feel, man, here this guy goes, he's throwing you, yeah. I would try to relate to you to get as much of an instinct as you could, like the cat, to come down on your back as flat as you could. Now, a lot of people say, well, let your legs hit first to break the fall. Right. But that's like an airplane landing and touching on one wing first, one wing tip. You, mm -hmm. would, you really don't want that. Your feet hitting first jars through your body because the impact of your weight is all coming down. So you try to land as flat as you can. Now, landing as flat as you can hurts like hell. And as I said, after two or three of them, really it, the toll starts to be taken. Yeah. But if you come down and you don't land flat, uh, you stop wrestling after that match because you're gonna come down on your hip or your shoulder, and all your weight coming down on that point is the same as the airplane landing on one wing. Do you then practice the way you would be thrown? Oh yeah, you'll take, you'll take, I'll, I can go into the ring and uh, I can just, I'll hit the ropes and I can come off and I'll kind of somersault and, and take the bump over by myself. Right. Uh, uh, the same as uh, you see the football players in the game. Yeah, when they're, they're banging their pads. They, they want to get used to the jolt 
the impact, you might say. And, uh, and there's a whole slew of different uh, type bumps that I call, as, as we call it, that you practice to take. Uh, Is it a fair to question to ask you sure. how old you are? Well, I've gotten old enough that I've started lying about it. What do you, what will you do after? Uh, I probably could sit back and count my coupons, but I don't think I'll do that. I enjoy life too much. I'm too active of a person. I'm sure I will get into some area of promotion in one capacity or another. Within wrestling? Yes. Can I ask you how you've invested your money? Mostly in real estate. Really? Our income property. And locally or nationally or internationally? Nationally, internationally. Just and and then, because one of the things I've always been confused by, are wrestlers paid a salary by the organization for no, whom they work? No, no, it's strictly a percentage deal that you work out with each promoter. Uh, based on the gate? Yes. So and, Versus minimums. So when you hear about the schlock operations where the, you know, the X number of wrestlers are wrestling in, in Podunk, yeah. and, and the promoter doesn't pay or the check goes NSF, that, 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 what accounts for that kind of, I mean, it puts, uh, to me, a black mark on wrestling. It does, it does. It's, it's uh, what was the, the movie a few years ago with uh, uh, Paul Newman about hockey. Slap, oh, slap shot. Slapstick or slap shot or something. Yeah. And, and, and there are those operations <coughs> in the country in different places, but... Uh, Some like, say there's an operation like that operating in the state, not in, yours. In, in the, sta in the, in the state of the country? Yeah. Uh, if there is, I haven't heard about it yet. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the, the big time promoters, Minneapolis Boxing, Wrestling, Wally Carbo, and all the people he's associated with, no, that's not, uh, that's not their way of doing things. They're totally above board. They pay their bills out in front. And, uh, you know, uh, no. Did you know people like Yukon Eric? I knew him very well, personally. And, and uh, Killer Kowalski? I knew him professionally. Uh, tell me the difference, professionally versus personally. Uh, Kowalski was a very private person, extremely private, uh, always was. A legitimate athlete. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. One of, the, one of the most fantastic in the world. And who was the guy, there was an Australian, was there not, who used to... Uh, um, Pat O'Connor? No, nothing Pat The fellow who used to do the holds with the legs. He used to be... Um, oh, I'm going to lose somebody or other. Luthez? Luthez. No, well, he wasn't Australian. He was an American. Luthez was an American? Yeah, he was. I didn't six, know that. He was a six times world heavyweight champion. Yeah. Here's a man who today is about 66 years old. And what would he be doing? What do right we Right like, now? Old wrestlers never die, they just. Oh, well, they stay in promotion or into the matchmaking or something in one capacity or another, and which is what he is in now. Man's in phenomenal condition. I mean, if you stood him out here at 65 years old, there would be 30 year old men I just gotta, gotta cringing with there. envy. I hope you'll make a return visit. This sure, is we will. We'll be back after these words. This is what you call the body slam position before I'd be thrown over. I want to stop. <laughs> to Nick Bockwinkel, thank you. <laughs> to Spring Magazine, thank you. We'll see everybody next week. Thank you. You're the sport.